Welcome back, Vintage Gamers. It's been a while since I played a blue-red, you know, Stompy-style deck uh, on the channel, so I figured let's just give it a go. I put together this list, and I think it has some cool things going on. Mostly, I really would like to find a blue-based home for Fable in Vintage. I had some discussions in Italy with players, various players about this card, and we all agree that this card is strong. Uh, we just don't know where it should fit in a deck in Vintage. Um, when you play a non-blue deck, your deck is typically not super strong, so you're trying to find a place where we can play a blue deck and still play Fable, and obviously Fable gets a lot better when you're playing a full Moxon Suite to accelerate this onto turn 1 and turn 2. So, um, what I'm going to do is play this blue-red uh, shell today. This should have enough blue cards in it to be reasonable at casting force. 22, not bad. Uh, and then, yeah, so we have two game plans, really. We're slamming um, Caves, Fable, and uh, Magus. And we can also play, uh, you know, at past the turn instant speed and play Masterminds and Hole Breachers. I think the last time I streamed this deck, I played Ledger Shredders in the slot. But Ledger Shredders don't work super, super well with what's going on here. So maybe Fairy Mastermind will play a little bit better with the Hole Breacher plan. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not, not going to say that this is a, <laughs> an idea that will... Um, inspire confidence in me but we'll see what we can do with it i think that right now accelerated magus hold breacher are both really powerful things caves is probably an underrated card in vintage obviously you need to be playing you know a big mana deck that also plays red so there's not that many places where you can play caves but this card absolutely ends the game um in in similar fashion and speed to things like season engineer um fury definitely at its all-time best in vintage right now with the amount of creatures running around so we'll see how this works out. Uh, I'm going to play some spell pierces instead of like a typical fluster storm in that slot, just because that spell, spell pierce has been testing pretty well, as it hits a lot more things than a uh, fluster storm does, especially if we're not really doing as much like protecting of a combo or something similar. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, could be a big flop. Could be a rousing success. Uh, we'll have to see when we enter the league. Catch you then. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. All right, here we go. We got Sean across the table, probably still working on that um, crop rotation oath control deck. Seems like he's had some really strong success with it. Multiple top eights, good prelim records. Um, let's see what we can do versus that. We have no acceleration here, but we, at least we have... Some counter magic and some ancestral recall. I'm not sure that Fairy Mastermind is exactly the card that I'm looking for in the slot that I'm playing it, but I decided that it did a good enough job. Um, should probably, big deal is helping us increase our blue count. Uh, another thing is it's a 2-1 flash flyer for attacking, so. Kind of an awkward looking hand we have, but the mox draw is quite good, and this is going to let us play any of our choices next turn. Here comes Emerald. One thing my hand doesn't currently do very well is beat a uh, Urza Saga, which could be problematic considering my opponent's deck is entirely based around Urza Saga. Not entirely, I guess. It has a little bit of an oath subplan, but its main plan is crop rotation and Saga control. I didn't really put a lot of great ways to beat Saga into my deck. Um, however, Blood Moon is definitely one of the better ones. I do have four Magus. Oh. Okay, maybe they're on something different now, considering they have just played a Mox Opal. I wonder what they're playing today. I mean, they have full knowledge of what's in my hand, so... If my opponent didn't have Gataxian Probe, I'd feel a lot better about this, but... 
they kind of are forced to cash in this ancestral now because uh, they don't want to play it into hole breacher later um so it's probably fine for them to just get this ancestral countered and try to play what oh they're just playing combo oath okay or maybe they're not maybe oh oh no they're definitely playing combo oath <laughs> okay what do we got i mean they know my hand so i can just have six dark ritual oath so what are we doing now sean has been all kinds of brewing Mana Morphos off of my Dark Ritual. We're going in deep. Burning Wish. What year are we in? Okay, all right, okay. I'm excited. I if they have Tinker in their in their exile here, it's pretty strong, right? Tinker this opal into a citadel. Yeah, they do. Tinker. All right. Okay, I see you, opponent. Their opening hand was turn one ancestral Tinker. Brutal. Breach. Okay. Wow. Right of Flame. This is a legacy deck? What's going on here? Right of Flame and Dark Ritual. So I assume my opponent has no forces in their deck. Oh, you know what I forgot to include in my deck? Null Rods. That was a pretty straightforward thing that I should definitely have included in my deck. Null Rod. How did I miss that? I guess I was just thinking about all the other things we were boarding our sideboard for. Definitely should have null rods in this deck. For like the dual matchup sideboard. Alright, so we're casting Tinker for a top, I assume? No, just a Lotus. Okay. Also clears their top card of their library. I mean, I can't imagine they have that many lands in their library. It's probably like a 10 land all in combo deck, right? Wonder if the oaths are even in the main. Could be sideboard oaths with Orchard as a, as a five color land. Yeah, something I definitely recommend for players right now is to have sideboard null rods, even if your deck is an artifact-based deck, because um, Jewel just folds so hard to null rod. That it's definitely more of a well, you're gonna you can't function at all, and I can still kind of function underneath a null rod kind of deal. I just kind of forgot about it here, but I'm not even a hundred percent sure how good null rod would be against my opponent's deck. It is an opal deck, so it's probably good, but they are also a Rite of Flame, Mana Morphos, Dark Ritual deck, so. Hard to say. So another Tinker. This one's for an LED. Okay. Shuffle again. I'm surprised my opponent hasn't killed me yet, but... I don't exactly know what the plan is. I assume they're just trying to find another Burning Wish, and then... Some kind of Storm Kill. Let's see. Burning Wish does get Sorceries, right? So it doesn't get um, Brain Freeze. It will only get tendrils i'm sure there's a tendrils in the burning wish board watsies sure bobble okay nine life again I, I don't think we can lose but i mean i don't think we can win but uh i do want to see more about what's going on with their decks so and they've already seen my whole hand from Probe anyways. Bobble, bobble. All right, I mean, Null Rod obviously would be great against my opponent's deck. <laughs> I wish we had it, but... I don't actually have, like, more cards to bring in. I already have six forces in the main. Like, I'm not 100% sure that a Pyroblast is even good here. I have, like, Flusterstorm, maybe. 
My opponent can just like tinker again or brainstorm again. They have like basically as much mana as they'd like. I'm surprised they didn't have a top, but I guess maybe. So the tinker is in the sideboard, but the citadel is in the main. I guess you can cast citadel off of dark ritual and things, so maybe it's fine. Lion's Eye Diamond does get to get rid of the two cards they drew to put even more cards in the yard if they want. 24 Storm. We've gone... Pretty deep. All right. Bobble Jet. So much mana. These three cards can also go into the yard, so they can cast, like, Tinker three times to shuffle three times if they need to. I mean, if they have a breach, breach is like a little surprising, but I guess it's not super surprising because they probably have the Yog Will inside of their Burning Wish package. Okay, here's a Burning Wish tendrils, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, all right. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I'm just going to bring in this Fluster Storm. I guess I still bring in the Pyroblast, even if I don't think it's super good, because I don't need these Furies. I kind of wonder if Leyline is good against them. I would probably bring in Soul Guide if I had Soul Guide, but I'm not sure about Leyline. Just run like this. This is probably fine. If I had Null Rods, I would definitely bring in Null Rods. Maybe the key is like Lightning Bolt or Fury 3-4 should be Null Rod. I just wanted to have like a lot of cards for Mono White just so I could play like remove their creature game plan. Um, but maybe that's not necessary. So it's like, or maybe what's not necessary is I don't even need Shops cards. That's possible too. Because uh, I boarded two Furies here. So this was my sideboard. So yeah, maybe I can just change like two creature removals for two Null Rods or something. That's kind of what happens when you just queue up the league without testing at all. But kind of wanted to jam. So yeah, my opponent had an Ancestral Tinker. Uh, not even an Ancestral Tinker hand. My opponent had an Ancestral Burning Wish turn one Tinker hand. So pretty nice one. So this is a good hand. Got a force and a spell pierce. I don't know how often like my opponent's deck is going to always get a you know a nice hand that does a do does a strong play on turn one. Um, historically, when I've tried these. These, like, all-in combo decks with no forces, I haven't been super impressed. They mulligan not great, and they fold pretty hard to, you know, enough interaction. Obviously, I only had one piece of interaction in game one, and it wasn't not enough to get not get turn one killed, so we'll have to see. But hopefully, Force of Will plus Pierce is a nice combination here. People not looking great. Don't know if my opponent's going to choose to bring in oaths, considering uh, oh, Fable looking better now that I have a Moxon. Uh, I think I want to play it all out. Uh, considering I did show them a bunch of creatures in game one, it's possible they boarded into some oaths. So yeah, just five color lands with probably the ability to oaths in the, from the sideboard is my guess. So the sideboard's probably like Six Oath cards and eight Burning Wish cards, or five, uh, seven Burning Wish cards or something? Eight Burning Wish cards? Something like that. That's what I assume. My opponent is deep. Oh, they're probably playing Galvanic Relay is what's happening. That's uh, definitely a punish for not playing Flusterstorm. So if they, if they Relay here, it's quite unfortunate. Uh, I, that must be what it is. They must be playing Galvanic Relay. 
I mean, that's a nice way to move with the the trends. You know, people are cutting Flusterstorms and Mental Missteps. Play this deck that's good against, you know, bad against Flusterstorm and Mental Misstep. Yeah. I'm just going to let them all go. I don't think it's worth, like, blind countering one. Wow, that was a horrible Galvanic Relay. Hit four lands in a bobble. Don't think you could have possibly constructed a worse Galvanic Relay than that. I'm going to flash this Mastermind in. Uh, don't think it's getting better for him. I don't think they drew any cards that turn, so... They're only drawing one card this turn as well. Another fable. All right, well. I think my opponent expected a lot more out of their Galvanic Relay. To be fair, like if they hit any of the cards they hit in game one where it was all really strong cards, it would have worked out really well for them, but they just hit a lot of dead cards. Kind of, it's probably hit half of their lands in their deck. I assume their deck is like 10 lands, right? It's probably like Talarian Academy, 4 Orchard, 4 Mine, maybe another land. I don't know, they could technically be playing Saga, right? So maybe they have Sagas as well, not sure. Probably unlikely. Fable, uh -huh. I'm going to pitch this Fable to Fable probably. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of both of these fables looking for interaction. I did not draw the good cards, so... Yeah, all right. I'm just going to get an attack in. We'll probably go for a Mastermind at their end step. I don't want to give them a card for the turn here. Oh, they're just going to actually give me the extra card anyways, so... My opponent said Time Walk was the card on top. And I said bad card. And then I drew Time Walk anyways. Still probably activating this. Kind of wish I had another Fable now. MTGO bug at its at its finest here. <laughs> Did we really shuffle? <laughs> uh, okay, my opponent just had a five cost relay and missed. Not much they can do about it. I don't think ley line makes sense here. Just gonna run it back. I, I sure like how I'm getting punished for having spell pierces instead of fluster storms, though, because I would have definitely have fluster storm the shit out of that galvanic relay if I had a uh, fluster storm instead of spell pierce. So it's kind of fun that 
vintage has a big enough card pool that if people start making you know trending changes you can really exploit that with uh different card choices so i kind of think that's a really big upside Uh, all right. I mean, I have a fluster storm. I don't have a turn one, so maybe I need to mold to a force, but I can't imagine I, I, I'm allowed to keep something. Oh, all right. There goes my fluster storm. Unless they have a draw spell, maybe. I imagine I lose my fluster storm here. Very mastermind, huh? Um, so the question is going to be... Do I jam a Fable to try to find interaction before my opponent kills me? I feel like the answer is yes. Like, sure, Hull Breacher might have stuff to say, but... I think I would rather just try to find some interaction. Like, how many draw spells does my opponent actually have in their deck? Brainstorm Ancestral, two. Probably not more than that. Maybe they have like a wheel in their Burning Wish board, but they're never going to wheel into like a Hold Breacher that they know about, so. This also represents that I draw, drew Force of Will because I kept the blue card in my hand. I mean, I, I assume I'm just dead. Like, what's the probability that I survive this? Like, it's going to be Burning Wish Tinker, right? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Guess I should have played Hole Breacher. <laughs> nah, it's probably fine. They wouldn't have gone for this line if I hadn't gone, uh. Fable. Yeah, I'll still draw a uh, force, though. That'd be sweet. I guess, man. All right, well. See if they have like a relay follow up or something. Yeah, I don't know how I'm supposed to do anything without a force, right? Maybe I just needed a mulligan in my hand until I had a force. Yeah, relay for eight. Wish I had like a, a silence or something. Oh, there's a brainstorm and not that much else actually. So if I just deploy a whole breacher. I don't think a Magus is going to matter. <laughs> what are these draws? My Fable, I keep discarding like action card, action card and drawing land, land, which is probably the opposite of what my Fable was supposed to be doing. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I have to draw it to forces, right? So am I really supposed to be making a different line? I think it's just unfortunate. Oh, I guess we got there.
All right, let's try this again. Hopefully we get as lucky as last time. This hand is not lucky. This hand is worse. All right, this hand's our best one for sure. Um, I feel like we're not going to have... How many cards do I have to put back? Two. I could technically put back this and this. That actually seems reasonable. Basic Island. Okay. Mox? No, hold Breacher. It's not that bad, though. Why does my opponent keep stopping me in random places? First, the end of combat. Now, my drop is. Soul Ring? Please don't mental misstep. A mental misstep would kill me. Okay. Not ideal. Man, I wish I could play Hole Breacher. It's three mana. Why couldn't I have a mana crypt? Would have been so much nicer. Uh oh. Saga Gaming. Notably bad for me here. Considering I, uh, my. When your main answer is Magus of the Moon and you don't have the Magus of the Moon, not great. Fun brainstorm art, though. What is this? Oh, Justin. Yes, I needed to negate the Lotus. It's okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. Not a problem. Just a seasoned engineer. Definitely can beat it. Man, I guess my best play is probably end of turn hole breacher. But gosh, are we in trouble? Seasoned Engineer feels really bad for me to. I don't know how I'm beating that card ever. Like, I can Fury it before it has Forge on it, but. Yeah, things are not good. I guess if they don't have a counter spell and I get a hole breacher and I get an attack. Oh my god, I'm not gonna be able to get an attack in either. Never mind. I am super dead. Super dead. I don't really know. Like, my opponent just makes a... The Mox is actually even worse because it blocks my whole Breacher now. Before, it wouldn't have blocked my whole Breacher. If I hit a land, I guess at least I can get a Caves and just take the initiative normally. But... I don't know. I'm not racing this unblockable 10-10. <laughs> the Seasoned Dungeoneer being completely unblockable is... Definitely a mood. Yeah, I can't attack into that, so it's just going to be caves for me. I guess 
I could theoretically time walk my way out of this, perhaps. Feels unlikely, though. I just like can't, can't attack into this. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't. I don't really see how I'm supposed to. I take seven, twelve. Um. Come on, opponent. It's, I can't be making that many choices. Maybe they're playing multiple matches of Magic. Yup. Then mm, things become what? 4-4? Four, four. And I have to jump it. Yeah. I think the answer is probably some combination of Ancestral Time Walk, which is, I guess, usually the answer every time something bad happens. But this card is super strong. Olus is Citadel. Classic initiative tinker deck. So this game was just I guess they drew I guess they drew a mox. I feel like this game was pretty won if I had just negated the Lotus. What did they play? They had played Strand Lotus. It's kind of a hard call for me to make. So this is takes seven and then eleven and then five is sixteen. So I have to jump here. I guess. I guess if I block here, this lets me draw into Twister. So probably makes more sense to just block with caves. Cause with Twister, I don't I don't know if I can win, but probably can't even win if I Twister though, right? Realistically. Because this thing is unblockable. And a 7-8. <laughs> it's got to give me the best chance, though, so. Blue, white, black, white plume. Sure. It gives me a treasure token. It does untap their 7-8, though, and make it impossible for me to attack, so... Probably can't win. <laughs> All right. Turn one seasoned dungeoneer confirmed good enough to beat blue red pile, which I guess I would have assumed anyways. Really needed to force. But. It is what it is. All right. Let's go to the next game. Um, this feels like Extra Furies are good, Pyroblast is good, maybe Bolt is good, hard to say if Bolt is good. Um, I mean, all my cards just seem totally fine, so I don't know how I'm going to bring cards out. Like, I have maybe the Fairy Masterminds are not very good, but then my forces are pretty garbage. Might be fine. My forces look really bad here, though. I would love to play this hand if I had mana. But I don't have mana. So I guess it's just a mulligan. This hand has mana, but nothing good to do with the mana. Classic. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a keep, so. The problem is, don't, I'm going to like keep this hand and lose to Tinker, right? Classic initiative Tinker going to get me again.
Um, there you go. Of course, Mana Crypt. God, are we playing turn one season Dungeoneer? What is this mana? So, oh, my opponent. That's it. Pass. All right. It's just a, a couple of mana, right? Just eight mana. Caves. I mean, my opponent definitely has force, but. What can I really do, right? I got to make the play. I'm not going to wait. Oh, am I just going to get wheeled? Wheel and deal? What is this? Just two hull breachers? Oh, and a force. Oh, 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 I see. So is their last card Time Twister? Bro, I, I am not pitch casting a Fury into this whole Reacher. I won't do it. If they have Time Twister, I'll take the death. I'll just take the death. If my opponent has eight mana, Force of Will, whole Reacher, Time Twister, so be it. I will die. Though I can't be the Saga either, so things are bad. I'm so dead. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh <sighs> The secret is just draw eight mana. Well, maybe the secret is just players of Saga. Let's be real here. All right. Can I get a Blood Moon? No Blood Moon. All right. Well, my plan of playing Magus of the Moons to beat Urza Saga does not look like it's a very good one if I draw zero Magus of the Moons. <laughs> uh, I have been bullied. I have been bullied. God, I'm never going to be able to kill these constructs. Maybe that I should just play Dress Downs in the board. I could probably just play Dress Downs. Dress Downs doesn't seem that bad. I don't know. It just feels like... If I'm... Like... It just feels like I'm not trying. I didn't... The problem is I did none of my powerful things. So if my powerful things are attacking, then 6-6 six, six constructs are a problem. So this is how much... This is, this is currently 11 toughness. If I were to kill one... So even if I draw a land and had a red source so I could play double fury, it wouldn't even be good enough. Crazy. I'm going to draw the Magus now. Are you ready? No, another fury. Whatever. All right. Cool enough. All right, that was a, a horrible showing. All right. My redemption arc starts now with this beautiful black lotus. Force of Will, tons of different hate bears hand. I'm going to exert some power. This makes me think they're on mono white and forcing this pearl might be good, but also just forcing their three drop is good. So, or maybe they're not on mono white. Maybe they're on shops. Oh, what is up with everybody having 10,000 mana against me? Okay. Oh, I see you, opponent. I mean, you can't resolve this, but I still see you. Man, unfortunately, they have the white source as their pearl. 
So the Magus isn't even good. Just hold breacher. Nice. I think the answer here is just going to be Fable of Fairy. So I just don't think this Magus is good anymore, unfortunately. I wonder if I was just supposed to counter this Pearl. I definitely thought about it. The minute they went Tomb Pearl, I was like, I should, maybe I should counter this, but... All right. It's fine. Look at this. Oh, they have <laughs> two, four, six, seven, <laughs> two, four, six, and eight, eleven. What is happening? Come on, man. <laughs> what? All right. I think this deck is uh, it's time to retire this deck here. What am I? How do I even beat this? I think I need to save this time walk for an attack that does something. They have a mana crypt and no other cards, so. What if they top deck? <laughs> okay. Fair enough, opponent. I see you. I see you. Now they have a Vigilancing 5-6 Angel. Okay, all right. Can I even win? No. They have a Vigilancing 5-6 Angel now. They didn't attack because they don't realize they have Vigilance. Nice. Uh, yeah, I have no idea if I can... I mean, they have an active Mana Crypt, and I have a Time Walk. And they're, they're, okay. I'm, I'm going to play it out. I'm going to play it out. I'm going to play it out, chat. I don't think I should play it out, but I'm going to play it out. Oh, they're going, they're going into the Lost Well? Based. All right, hope they find a Scry they can enjoy. I did find a scar they can enjoy. Is it like uh, another Chancellor? What's going on here? Another White Plume. Okay. Are they going to goad me? Watch me get goaded here. They might. They might just goad me. All right. The good news is I technically can steal the initiative by making a second Fairy Mastermind. And that would do something. Opponent missed five damage. Hmm. I think they're going to goad me. Nope, they decided not to goad me. Okay. I think that means I can wait another turn then, because I'd like to like make an end step fairy. That way I could maybe make two fairies in attack and steal the initiative. Something like that. I think the po the choices my opponent's made have been injured. No attack with Chancellor. Not been super happy with the po the choices my opponent has made. I'm going to definitely activate an end-step fairy here. Fury. Fury is pretty interesting with Reflections of Kiki-Jiki. I do have to remember everything costs one more, though. Okay. So... I think... Make a second mastermind, get in two damage, steal the initiative, take a time walk turn, play a fury. This just feels like we have a, an avenue here. This might be too aggressive, but. Okay, so these get in, they kill the real mastermind, they take two, I steal the initiative. I play an island, I play a sapphire, I play a time walk. Obviously, I lose my ability for aerial combat, but I think taking the initiative here is better, possibly. Might not be.
So now they're at 10. I go to my next turn. I forge, because I want a trap. So I guess I just forge onto this shaman token. And then I'm fable. All right, so now what I can do is Fury, copy Fury, killing the Chancellor. I'm going to win this game because my opponent, I mean, even my opponent attacked twice, I'd only deal 10 damage, right? It's not really winning. All right, so I play a Fury. I pay for my Fury. Fury resolves, deals four to this. Copy my Fury. This Fury deals two to this and, I don't know, two to this. Probably fine. Then I attack. I have to jump this. I guess they don't have to. I mean, this is a win, right? That's a big game. I think I'm supposed to win this game, but the Elstorm would have completely shut off my entire deck, which is pretty funny. Powerful. Okay, all right. I, I am the initiative gamer. All right, we're going to bring in Fury and Lightning Bolt and take out uh, Mental Misstep, Probe. Let me just take out like Negations. Or maybe they just... Yeah, I think it's better to have all the creatures than have those cards. Let's just do this. I feel like my deck actually should have a pretty reasonable mono white matchup. I'm not sure if that's a true statement, but it's my uh it's my gut instinct, my little my feelings. I guess hull breachers are pretty bad, but again, they're flash creatures that attack, so Unfortunately, my opponent did hit me with the Chancellor reveal here, so no force of will for their turn one play. Good lord. Might be still supposed to force of will whatever play they do have, just so I can play creature. That's actually really good. Creature's untapped. They can't play any more spells after this, though, so... Seems like a win to me. It doesn't seem like a great hand from them. I drew a Lotus. Interesting. I think I'm going to fetch a Mountain. Because I think the Caves should be better here. Than a Hull Breacher. And I might just use this Lotus to play a Hull Breacher. Like my one spell for turn. Oh my god, I'm so bad. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. I got my one spell for turn. Should probably have been Black Lotus. So I could play Ansep Hole Breacher, but man, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. That's their one spell for turn, Chrome Box. Yeah, this is not a great start from them, considering they had a Chancellor plus Black Lotus draw. If I can hit a land here and play caves, I guess they would technically steal the initiative and get a planes, which is pretty bad. Hmm. So maybe I would never do that because it'll be tapped to caves. Maybe playing this mana card is just going to lose me this game, actually. I guess if they don't have a cavern, I can still just force whatever play they make. So maybe it's okay. I could see this, like, losing three Crypt Flips and losing this game, though. I definitely am not sure about this Mountain, either. Yeah. I 
Okay. It is what it is. Also, if I counter something, I can't play a, f a whole breacher in the same turn. Also, I can't play like two whole breachers off this lotus either. Yeah, I did a lot of things wrong here. I should definitely have played lotus and then played end step whole breacher. It was a super huge punish. What? They hit the land drop. Oh no. Now I have to force. Yeah. I'm just going to get rid of the spell pierce. There's like no chance I ever spell pierce anything for the rest of this guy. Right? One or more non Phyrexian. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just going to die. <laughs> Maybe if I draw a lightning bolt, I'll win. I guess if I draw Lightning Bolt or Fury, I'm probably back in this game. But this Mana Crypt is going to try to kill me, right? They only have one card left. Losing this game feels really, really bad. I guess if I play Caves, I get an Island. And then I can play a Hull Breacher. I still take an extra damage, but it's fine. Could I have played Caves last turn? No, I played Lotus last turn. Okay. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, opponent. Let's play more magic. Let's go. Oh, oh. They're ready. I wasn't ready. All right. Please, can I win a mana crit flip? No, I've lost both mana crit flips. Tapped creatures are going to argue. My mana crypt just doesn't cooperate ever. All right. So they're going to steal the initiative. I guess if they play a seasoned dungeoneer, I just die too. But i can't i can't do anything about the way i played this game i played the mana grip i had to live with the consequences took about eight thousand million damage from it i think if i had played black lotus on turn one hull breacher on their turn uh instead of mana grip i would have won this game pretty easily but i threw it so It's weird because like that was the plan I was making in my head and then I just clicked the wrong one because I it was like muscle memory like oh there's a chancellor I have to pay for my mana crypt you know. But I don't have a follow up creature. It's kind of good for me. All right, so if I win every mana crypt flip for the rest of this game, we might still be able to win. I lost all three mana crypt flips and died. Okay. Yeah, I mean lightning bolt very easily wins this game. All right, I mean, I think if I simply winning a mana crypt flip or two would probably win me that game, but it's okay. I deserve that loss. Let's try again. Uh, I mean, we can go Lotus Fable looting, which is probably not good enough, right? If I go Lotus Magus, then there's a possibility that I can't ever play any of their spells unless they have one of their four Chrome Moxes. I, I think this is probably too all in. If I had a force of will, I might keep this hand and go go fable. Okay, this hand seems fine. Probably don't need two Magus, I would assume. I guess they could even have solitude, so Magus is not like it's a super lockdown anyways. Just gonna go Island Ancestral. Good lord. Um, they have a Chancellor, so probably better to just Island Ruby. Maybe I, I'm supposed to ditch Ruby. I can't. It's possible I'm supposed to ditch Ruby. It's really hard to say. I think I'm supposed to ditch Ruby. 
Because if I don't ditch Ruby, when am I ever casting this Ancestral, right? Well, I didn't draw the Force, but now I definitely wish I have a Ruby. <laughs> All right. I mean, I have two Lightning Bolts. That's got to be good, right? You kept Planes Go? I hate that. I hate that. But it actually is uh, kind of good against my Magus of the Moon, huh? It's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, I think most of the time, if you go Planes Go on a seven card keep, it was just a bad keep from Monar White, but. I think it's still correct for me to deploy the Magus here. Maybe they have a Solitude too. It doesn't really matter. I gotta use my mana. I don't think waiting around is good. They don't have the ability to force. All right. So let's see what opponent has for us. The thing that's cool here is maybe if my opponent was keeping Ancient Tomb or something, then um, we would be able to stop that. Uncounterable Thalia no longer. Not that I had a Force. Fury. I think the answer is just use a Bolt and attack. Start getting damage in. Caracas, Lotus, okay, my Magus of the Moon not stopping much here, considering my opponent has had Black Lotus in, like, all of their games, oh my lord, really, <laughs> if I just have a blue card, I very easily win, but now I'm just dead, right, that's super frustrating, because I don't get any of my ETBs, That's so silly. I'm just getting rocked by Black Lotus, Elish Norn in all of my games. <laughs> okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'm trying to cast... Uh, oh, I can just pitch cast it. So, is that better? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, The good news is that this will actually trade with an Elish Norn, though I did just pitch cast my... Not actually trade, I have to bolt it, but... I did throw away my, um... My caves for this. I think it's worth it so I can force their next play. I guess there's like a world where they like kill my Magus, and then they have Caracas Elish Norn. I guess they can't really re replay it, so it's fine. I should not have six in case my opponent plays. I guess I would just get murdered by a Solitude, wouldn't I? Yeah, I was like. I was feeling that I was like so far ahead, could never lose, and now I'm just so far behind, can never win. At least I played this correctly. If they had salt, you should use it on my other, my other turn, probably. But okay, they can't attack, so chaos is a good draw if I could cast it later. I mean, I'm gonna attack with my fury. 
Come on, you have doubled solitude? All right, we've been bested. Elish Norn. I thought we would beat Mono White, but, but Elish Norn is too much. Can the suffering continue? I guess we're here to find out. Yes. Okay, 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 I guess so. This is fine. This is fine. Everything is fine. No problem. No pro. Oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> They're on squee. Everything is not fine. I mean, Hull Breacher would be really good here if I could play it on turn one. <laughs> Where are my Black Lotus hands? Let me play the turn one, Elish Norn. It's okay. Everything, everything's cool, fun, wild time. I probably should have led Delta in case I wanted to fetch basic island and fetch basic mountain off of this. I think there's a world where I brainstorm end of turn so I can try to find a Moxin and play a whole Breacher. I feel like that's a possibility. Feels like it's going to be a very hard game to win if I don't, so. But yeah, this is uh, unfortunate because I really think I should have fetched an island off of my delta. Nice. Though I guess I don't have a... Um, a blue card now, so. Maybe not nice. I just have to hope they just activate into it. Ooh, we got an activator. And now we have to hope they have no force. Discard your hand, please. Nice. Two treasures. They go down to one card in hand. I have a blocker. Yeah, I mean, now I just play a, 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 a caves and I'm winning. All right, they're just off it. Okay, cool. Don't think I would concede there until I play caves, but. All right, we're going to bring in Sphinx Tabernacle, Leyline. Um, Magus is good. Negation is bad. Pierce is probably bad. I probably just like don't want forces. This can help me clear a board. I kind of like the idea of just not playing counter magic, jam all the cards. I don't know if that's good, but that's kind of the idea that I like here. Let's try it. It's possible that I take out like fables and play forces, maybe. That actually it sounds even better. These are the cards I want. I just can't cast them ahead of curve, so they're probably just not fast enough. Nice. Sweet. Sand slaps. So what do we, how do we, how do we advance here? Um, 
Chalice. I think I need to deploy the Soul Ring this turn. Oh, I got my soaring misstepped. My god. That is probably game losing. That might be just super Oh, this is a weird activation. I don't I think you're just supposed to wait a turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not an activation you want to make. If you have a, a Ruwal in hand, just wait a turn because then you can activate, hit your hollow one, return your Venge Vine. Here, you 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 made a mistake and now it's not gonna ooh, I'm gonna punish so bad. That's a huge punish. Just wipe the board. No cards in hand. No squeeze in yard. Um, so yeah, uh, some of the the decisions you have to make when you're playing Squee are if you have one card in hand, are you know when are you gonna activate? You're gonna wait one turn. You're gonna wait two turns. You're gonna activate and upkeep with zero. You know, there's a lot of choices. You know, it's all about trying to figure out what's the highest likelihood of being able to return your Venge Vine. That kind of thing. Though the mental misstep on my soul ring is going to stop me from doing anything powerful here. Magus of the Moon Tabernacle. Interesting combo. So here they have two cards. Seems like a reasonable bizarre activation because you can keep a hollow. Well, you only have two hollow ones left. You might want to wait. That way you can hold root walls. This is probably an activate if I had to guess, though. Another Venge Vine into the yard. You do want to hold a Root Wall there if it's your last card. Try to make sure you have the ability to do a Venge Vining. God, I'm going to die to these Venge Vines. Uh, I can't even draw any of my zero mana, so I have a pretty hard task ahead of me. Even with my opponent... Um, ugh. I going to say even with my opponent um, missing... They don't need to activate now. I'd probably just hold this Wasteland activation until the day actually need to use it. No reason to just throw away um, your Wasteland. Could, I could easily have a second Tabernacle or something. Ooh, this activation is really bad, though. I don't like this activation. I guess it gives them an upkeep activation, but is that good? Is that better than just having extra cards in hand? I would think not. It's like here we just upkeep activated, lost a root walla. Maybe it's fine because they're gonna. I don't know. It just doesn't look like it's good to me. I think I don't. I don't like that instep activation. Second bazaar. I mean, rewarded, rewarded. Not bad. Now I would definitely activate now because you have a chance of hitting another root walla and bringing back all your vengeance of the wasteland on tabernacle. Hit a squee, so not dead. Dead. Uh, I just want to hit a land and slam a magus here. Probe. I'll take two life to get a redraw. Missed. All right. I'm just going to ditch this ley line. I guess theoretically. Yeah, I, okay. So they're going to keep their root wall in play. One squee. Yeah, I mean, this looks, looks quite bad. Hit one root wall. I just am dead on Venge Vines, right? One, two, two vines. So I'm not dead dead, but pretty much. So I guess if they bring all their vines back, I can use two furies to kill two vines and two lizards. Wow, they're so lucky. <laughs> really? All right. 
Um, but that'll still leave me dead to hollow one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been bested. You yeah, definitely, I definitely got bested here. That mental misstep just ruined the whole game for me. Needed to dodge mental misstep. If they had activated this bizarre, and <laughs> uh, no, 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 they couldn't do that because they had a hollow one in their hand, right? Nice. All right, so I draw a third fury. No, okay. So, yeah, mostly that game was just one mental misstep to rule them all, right? Do I want to have forces instead of um, fables? I actually think the answer is probably yes to that. Now that I'm thinking more about it. Sorry about that. All right. What do I have? Yep. Keep. It's a hell of a hand. Hope I don't get mind break trap, but if I do, it is what it is. If I can slam this on turn one, I feel like we have a pretty high chance of winning. And if we don't, we at least have some reasonable follow ups. They have to have Force of Will or Mind Break Trap. They can't have Negation at this point. Nice. All right, so they can have Fury for it, but if they don't have Furies in their deck, they are pretty cold to this. All right, mountain go. This is unfortunately a mountain, so I can't play like fairy mastermind and ancestral. Uh, yeah. Is there like any world I care about these? Like casting my ancestral now gets me negated for no reason, so I think I just am fine with that happening. Mountains for days. I'm gonna try to resolve this. I think it's better than playing a mastermind. Okay. Now I have a force for a fury, anyways. So all they can really do is like play Basking Ruwallas and maybe pitch cast Furies. Turn one Magus has some pretty high upside in Vintage, but it is just a great ogre sometimes. What do we got? Chalice on zero, you got it. I feel like all my uh, hate bears here are pretty good against my opponent's deck, which is kind of funny. No, I want to be able to hard cast this Fury. That'd be pretty fun. Just going to hold the Force and the Mastermind in my hand, considering... Well, maybe not. Considering the only way I really lose is Fury, right? Mm, do I activate Mastermind here? Now I can pitch to hand size. Probably not necessary. Don't even care if this gets countered at all. 
They probably don't care if this resolves either, considering Fury kills both of them. All right, they're off it. Aha, uh -huh, I strike back. All right, one last time into the abyss here. Haven't really um, been happy with how this deck has looked, but it's done some cool and fun things. Like this. Yeah. Okay, on color Moxon, let's do this. Oh, what you got? What you got for me? What you got for me? Oh, Mox Pearl. Moxon certainly make Magus's less good. If I knew this was Mono White, I'd probably counter the Mana Crypt. But it could easily be any deck still. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And. And this Magus is only going to be good if they have one of those uh, Saka Gamers. Oh, oh, untapper, untapping, mana. Three, two, Sphere. Wow. All right, I'm just going to negate Sphere. All right. Saga game? No, nope. workshop. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Three ball. Crucible. All right. Well, Magus is good against Crucible. They also have active Mana Crypt. All right. Okay. Become Moon. Mishra's Moon Shop. All right. Mana Crypt. It's only fair that you make my opponent lose three crypt flips in a row like me, right? No, they won the flip. This just doesn't seem fair. Opponent still has the ability to play like Golos as a 3-5 is probably still strong. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything following up here. I could, I my best draw is obviously caves, right? The reason I had to force spheres so, so I could make sure I play my Magus on turn one, which is probably worth it. Nicely, Magus does shut off Crucible pretty much, so. Uh, yeah. I mean, depends on what my opponent's payoffs are. They have a manifold key. Ooh. I assume they're prison shops, so I mean, at this point, all they really have is what? Goloses? I guess Nettlesis. All the prison shops players still play Nettlesis because it's just... Super strong on its own. So maybe the answer is um, we can just add analysis still, which is probably true. One red mana, one white mana, four mana, up to five mana. Use your key. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we're we're going we're going to Golos Town. Three five, get a mountain. Oh, Karn. That's bad for me. <laughs> that is notably bad for me. They can stand up this crucible if they want. No? Okay. They got rid of my island. And played a chalice on zero. All right. Well. Okay. I guess Fury can kill this Karn if I hit a red... Card. They also still have five mana and the ability to search. Don't know what they would be able to get. Aha! Mana Crypt dealt damage. You've been bested. The arena of ideas. All right, stood up Crucible. That makes sense to me. Now I can't kill them with my Fury. I can't cast this because I lost my Sapphire. Oh, also they have a Sphere now too. So they have a Sphere and stood up Crucible. Yeah. They are pretty far from Lattice at least, but... It really depends on what's in their Karn board, I guess. 
I'm not feeling too confident about this game. Also, my sideboard isn't even good. I cut most of the cards. We have like a couple of shattering sprees. They are going into the card board. All right, this is my opportunity. If I can draw a red card, I can kill this Karn. Oh, they have a sky ship, huh? That's bad. <laughs> they can't cast their sky ship right now. There's a sphere resistance in play, but once they figure that out, it'll be good. Nope, six mana. Sorry, friend. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I still don't even that. I guess if they kill this, it doesn't leave me with a mastermind, so it's not even that bad. All right, so what'd you draw for turn? Another crucible. Okay. All right, so if I can just get that nice red card, fury this card away. Nope, of course not. All right. They still don't have the ability to play Skyship, and I still don't have the ability to do anything. There's still a Mana Corrupt in play. That's not damaging them. All right, what did you draw for turn this time? This time they just stand up a Crucible. Uh oh, one, two, three, four. That's so bad for me. That is a nightmare. That is the best top deck in their deck. They've drawn no lands. They kept a one land hand and drew no lands. Now it's not even that good to kill the Karn. Found my caves. Probably still correct to kill the Karn. I can't even play Fairy Mastermind because Sphere. Still not ready to concede this game, but it's almost over. That Nidalsis draw was by far the worst thing that could have happened. I think it would have been better for us. I guess it's not much better if they draw lands and play Skyship. Blows up my Magus. I can't still can't cast anything because of Sphere. So maybe not much better. All right. There's a world where I draw land and then I can like chump with Magus and oh, they hit the land. Okay. So now they sky ship me. They sky ship me. I draw a land. I take eight, nine. And uh, I mean, they should have done one more damage to me. Take nine. I hit them for eight. I think there's a world if I draw a land here, I still can play. No. All, right. All right, my opponent won too many flips, and I did not function through a Karn, so be it. Uh, I'm going to bring in Tinker and Sphinx, and I'm going to bring in... Actually, Lightning Bolt kind of seems bad. Just Shattering Spree. And then I'll take out... I feel like Fury is actually not good here. Mental Mist Up and Probe not good here. I mean, this just seems fine. Let's try that. Maybe Fury's okay, but they don't have that many creatures it kills, right? I did have four Shattering Sprees in the initial build of this deck, so having to play against shops after cutting them is pretty much on brand. All right, here we go. Look at that. Boom. Keepers. Oh, I guess I could cut some whole Breachers. Basic Island, Ancestral Recall. Wow. All right. Not that I would say that was ideal, but lands against shops, not bad. I think it'll just be pitch this to negation if we need to. Play a Fable, get a treasure going. Theoretically, we could just cast this, but it seems unlikely against shops, right? Mm-hmm. Emerald, yes. Okay. And Ruby. Okay. Not good. Saga Gaming, and I don't have a Magus. Bad for Justin. Saga Gaming Go? That is a bold life my opponent lives. I don't think holding up Pierce is better than deploying Fable. Especially because my opponent's likely to want to go Saga Gaming next turn rather than play a spell.
I guess it's hard to attack through this. I mean, maybe I just lose the constructs again. Uh, my deck, if your deck can't beat Urza Saga constructs, it's probably not a very good deck. And if I had to guess, I would say my deck is not a very good deck. Strip mine! Why do I bother? All right, so I can't attack with this Shaman because they're making three threes. I need to discard Hull Reacher Spell Pierce, probably. There's my Magus, but it's just a turn too late. Actually, I think I attack in here, just stops another Construct. So it's not exactly a turn too late. In that I still get their kill their saga. They don't get to go off with the saga, but I do have to beat a construct. And I got rid of my furies, so it will be hard to do that. I almost attacked through that. Fable is so broken. Sick card. All right, kill this con kill this saga. Too bad the saga wasn't keeping this alive, but. All right, so I need to be a construct. I have an active fable, another fable coming. Still have a ability to counter at least one of their upcoming spells, maybe two. Depends. Very much depends. All right, fable constructs coming in. Mountain is in play. Assume they don't have a play. Yeah. Old breacher. All right, I'm just going to deploy another Fable here. I mean, this is looking like quite a good showing for Fable, finally. I think this card is just super strong, but we'll find the sheet. Lotus, probably a scary draw for me here, not going to lie. Seven mana. I only get to counter one thing. Or I, they have a worm coil engine. Okay. I'm gonna need a shattering spree. The good news is I have reflection to block for a while here. Uh, Yeah, I don't think it's better to lose this than it is to just... All right, I'm going to get rid of... I feel like Twister is one of my ways out here. I don't feel like I'm ever hard casting this Sphinx, right? Technically, I could make two... I could, I could, if I just make more Shaman tokens. Let's just get rid of the Spell Pierce and this whole Breacher. Another fable. All right. I mean, I feel like we're getting close to a Sphinx cast. If I hit a land next turn, then I technically have a Sphinx cast. Okay. I think what we'll do, I guess I could take a hit, make a shaman token end of turn. And then if I hit a land. Maybe that's the plan, actually. Just take a huge hit here, go down to zero, go down to two life. End of turn shaman token. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to two. Try to set myself up for a Sphinx. Feels like the way I win this game. Like, only way I can die from two is a Ballista, right? So that's not a huge deal. They have a Dismember. 
Wow. I'm just going to not let that happen. Okay, so my plan is enacted. I will make a token. I need to hit a mana. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, all right, hit the mana. No. Flip. No, no, no. Why why did I F2 through that? Um like I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to make another token to deal initial two damage. It's fine, whatever, it's fine. Man, Fable is a busted magic card. All right, so hopefully this thing doesn't shoot me through. And then I can go mountain and white, black. Wow. All right, so this can eat, and I have chump. I probably have the chump with a reflection, unfortunately, but. This can actually eat this, right? Because it's first striking, sick. Opponent just played an Urza Saga. Maybe they played an Urza Saga at some other point in this game, too, into my, my Magus of the Moon. I didn't really notice that. It doesn't really, like, there's no animation that happens on the screen. So I just, like, didn't even see the first one if it actually happened that way. Which is sad because it's good content. No, no, I, that was the first time they did it. They just played an Urza Ur Saga into it. All right. This is lifelinking death touching, right? This is first striking. Okay. You got it, homie. Protection from red means I can't copy it with reflection, but, you know, we'll take some L's, I guess. <laughs> that was sweet. I don't know if I expected to win that game, but it was a good time. Let's run it back. Mm -hmm. All right, can we clutch out the the average modern league finish? Get that 3-2 money back. No worries. That's not a good sign. Not a great one. I must admit, not a good start here. Yeah, I mean, this you have to keep this, but there's a lot of ways this goes badly, unfortunately. Can't imagine ever mulliganing it, though. Keep, bottom, done. All right, what do you got for me, opponent? Is it Saga Go again? No, Workshop Gaming. Three ball. This game is too hard, man. How am I ever supposed to win? If I draw land every turn for the rest of the game, I may have a chance. Oh, they have no lands. Land every turn? No, no land. True to Sphere is definitely a magic card that exists. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yup.
I don't think we have as many lands as our opponent does. We only have 14 lands in our deck, and my opponent has uh, like 20 or something. If we draw three straight lands, I'll be very sad. Can I draw three straight lands, though? That seems reasonable. Oh, I'm lucky. For Justin, no, 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 not like this. Yep, it's doomed. It's so doomed. <laughs> yeah, okay, friend, I see you. You're fun. You're fun. <laughs> Well, one does not simply keep a no force hand against Trinisphere. Ay, ay, ay. All right, I've been vested. That was less fun than I had hoped it would be. Um, this deck actually has a problem with Saga, which is not ideal. It probably needs a couple more answers to Saga. Just Magus doesn't seem to cut it. I did think that Fable had some good moments. Fury had some good moments. Caves had some good moments. Full Breacher Mastermind I wasn't thrilled with. It's just another unfortunate circumstance of this deck has to mulligan to fast mana, and even then, it's sometimes just not fast enough. I don't really think I have any optimistic outlook on this kind of archetype, though. It just doesn't seem like it meets the criteria for a 2023 vintage deck. So I guess the search is still on for a deck that can house Fable. But I definitely like Fable, so we'll see. More content Monday, Wednesday, Friday. See you then.